This video is going to give a brief, accessible view of what genetic testing is and how to understand the results. The greater majority of EDS patients get genetic testing at some point or are looking into better understanding what their genetic test means. It can be scary looking at your test results and seeing something saying you are at risk of an aortic aneurysm or other potentially deadly conditions. Most often, these fears are brought to doctors and we must wait years to see a geneticist for answers. Many geneticists do not explain much about genetics, so we might feel unheard during the appointment and still stressed out. I am hoping to help reduce a bit of these fears and replace them with understanding in this video. Therefore, we are going to discuss the basics behind genetics including DNA, mRNA, genes, chromosomes and more before we touch on EDS-related content later. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid meaning that it is composed of two oxidized ribose sugars and nucleic acids which make up the CATG. That DNA is famous for. DNA is a self-replicating material that is present in nearly all living organisms as the main constituent of chromosomes. Each strand of DNA in the double helix can serve as a pattern for duplicating the sequence of bases. It is the carrier of genetic information. Bacteria are also living organisms, but their DNA structure differs from ours. Viruses are not considered living organisms, but they also carry a viral form of DNA which allows them to take over our cells and replicate. Nearly every cell in a person's body has the same DNA with the exception of sex cells as they have half the amount of DNA that is randomized. Most DNA is in the cell nucleus, but a small amount of DNA can also be found in the mitochondria. Mitochondrial DNA comes only from the biological mother of the child, making mitochondrial disorders dominant when the mother has one. Mitochondria are structures within cells that convert the energy from food into a form that cells can use. As touched on briefly, DNA has information stored in a code of four chemical bases, A, G, C and T which stand for adenine, UR9, cytosine, and thymine. DNA bases pair up with each other, A with T and C with G, to form units called base pairs. Each base is also attached to a sugar molecule and a phosphate molecule. Together, a base, sugar, and phosphate are called a nucleotide. Nucleotides are arranged in two long strands that form a spiral called a double helix. The structure of the double helix is somewhat like a ladder, with the base pairs forming the ladder's rungs and the sugar and phosphate molecules forming the vertical. Side pieces of the ladder. Human DNA consists of about 3 billion bases, and more than 99% of those bases are the same in all people. The order, or sequence, of these bases determines the information available for building and maintaining an organism, like the way in which letters of the alphabet appear in a certain order to form words and sentences. A gene is the basic physical and functional unit of heredity. Genes are made up of DNA. Some genes act as instructions to make proteins, and others do not code for proteins. In humans, genes vary in size from a few hundred DNA bases to more than two million bases. The Human Genome Project has estimated that humans have between 20,000 and 25,000 genes. Every person has two copies of each gene, one inherited from each parent. Most genes are the same in all people, but a small number of genes are slightly different between people. Alleles are forms of the same gene with small differences in their sequence of DNA bases. These small differences contribute to each person's unique physical features. Scientists keep track of genes by giving them unique names. Because gene names can be long, genes are also assigned symbols, which are short combinations of letters and numbers that represent an abbreviated version of the gene name. For example, a gene on chromosome 7 that has been associated with cystic fibrosis is called the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator with the symbol CFTR. In the nucleus of each cell, the DNA molecule is packaged into thread-like structures called chromosomes. 
Each chromosome is made up of DNA tightly coiled many times around proteins called histones that support its structure. The DNA that makes up chromosomes becomes more tightly packed during cell division and is then visible and makes that commonly known X shape as pictured to the right. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We get 23 chromosomes from each parent, with one pair being the sex genes either two X-shaped chromosomes or one X and one Y. There are special cases wherein humans have extra chromosomes such as Down syndrome, trisomy 23, and intersex. This occurs because the division of the cells in the parents to create egg and sperm do not divide properly, adding an additional chromosome. Each chromosome has a constriction point called the centromere, which divides the chromosome into two sections, or arms. The short arm of the chromosome is labeled the p-arm, and the long arm is the q-arm. The location of the centromere on each chromosome gives the chromosome its characteristic shape, and can be used to help describe the location of specific genes. mRNA stands for messenger RNA which is a type of single-stranded RNA involved in protein synthesis. mRNA is made from a DNA template during the process of transcription. Basically, a DNA strand is taken from the double helix and RNA is created by pairing the bases. mRNA uses the same bases as DNA with the exception of T becoming U which is uracil. For example, if you had a DNA strand with CTAG, then the matching RNA would be UCGA where it would be TCGA in the corresponding DNA strand. mRNA's job is to carry protein information from the DNA in a cell's nucleus to the cell's cytoplasm or watery interior, where the protein-making machinery reads the mRNA sequence and translates the bases into corresponding amino acids in a growing protein chain. This slide shows the process of translation, which is how a protein is formed. The mRNA strand leaves the cell nucleus and finds a ribosome which is the protein-making factory. The mRNA strand attaches itself to the ribosome where it is read and translated into amino acids. The mRNA is read as codons, which are groups of three bases, to determine what amino acid comes next in the protein chain. As you can see in the image, there are start codons which are specific sequences that tell the ribosome this is where the protein strand begins. A start codon always codes for the amino acid methionine and has the code UAG. Each codon is matched with an anticodon which is the matching bases that correspond with an amino acid. For example, the code for lysine is UUU which partners up with the AAA codon on the mRNA strand. This is quite a confusing process to explain, so check the description for a video explanation and a list of the different codes for amino acids if you are interested. Understanding this is not necessary to understand how to read a genetic test. Over a lifetime, our DNA can undergo changes or mutations in the sequence of bases, A, C, G and T. This results in changes in the proteins that are made. This can be a bad or a good thing. In the case of inborn mutations like EDS, the DNA is processed correctly but the DNA itself is faulty. A mutation is a change that occurs in our DNA sequence, either due to mistakes when the DNA is copied or as the result of environmental factors such as UV light and cigarette smoke. Mutations can occur during DNA replication if errors are made and not corrected in time. Mutations can also occur as the result of exposure to environmental factors such as smoking, sunlight, and radiation. Often cells can recognize any potentially mutation-causing damage and repair it before it becomes a fixed mutation. Mutations contribute to genetic variation within species. Mutations can also be inherited, particularly if they have a positive effect. However, mutation can also disrupt normal gene activity and cause diseases, like cancer. Cancer is the most common human genetic disease, it is caused by mutations occurring in a number of growth-controlling genes. Sometimes faulty, cancer-causing genes can exist from birth, increasing a person's chance of getting cancer.
There are point mutations which occur when one base is changed in the sequence. This type of mutation includes the subtypes silent, nonsense, and mesense. A silent mutation means that the mutation does not cause a change in the overall amino acid, for example if the original DNA codes for lysine, and the mutation codes for lysine then the mutation does not actually change anything. In the case of a nonsense mutation, the mutation codes for a stop codon which creates a short protein chain and is the most disruptive point mutation. A mesense mutation causes the amino acid to change, and this may be either conservative or non-conservative. A conservative mutation means that the amino acid it changes to is similar to the original amino acid and that the mutation may not create a change at all. A non-conservative mutation causes a drastic change to the type of amino acid produced which may completely change the structure of the protein. Friendshift mutations are almost always significant as they move the entire DNA sequence and can change all the following amino acids by the addition of one or more extra bases. If this were to happen at the beginning of the DNA chain, then hundreds of amino acids could be altered. These cause the most significant damage. It may create a stop codon at the beginning of a protein chain for example, making it not create a protein at all. Now that you understand the basic terms behind genetics and how DNA leads to the formation of proteins in the body, let's discuss how to actually read a genetic test. We are going to use this first example of a vascular EDS mutation from the EDS Society website. AD stand. For autosomal dominant which indicates that only one copy of the mutation is necessary for someone to develop vascular EDS. As you can see, the major mutation known to cause VEDS is a Collarjang 3 mutation. The rarer type 1 Collarjang mutation is more detailed as this Collarjang type can cause other EDS subtypes. For example, the C934C to T indicates that on chromosome position 934 has a mutation of C to T in the DNA sequence. Due to this change the 312th amino acid changed from arginine to cysteine when protein chains began to form. This mutation is significant as the two amino acids are very different in structure and function, which designates this as a non-conservative point mutation. Cysteine is the only sulfur-containing amino acid and due to this, it is very acidic in the body. Contrarily, arginine is a basic amino acid. This next example show one of my genetic results from Dante Labs. We are going to interpret the columns from left to right. Col 1 AM1 is the gene affected by the mutation. The CHRPOS is where the gene is located on the chromosome. In this example, the mutation is on chromosome 17 and is gene hash for 826.2618. The RSID or variant description suggests that this mutation is a duplication of the amino acid in position 243, making me have the amino acid appear a second time in position 244. The variation ID is used in the genetic repository to find this specific mutation and associated research. The phenotype name is the conditions that are related to this specific mutation, not any mutation associated with this gene. For example, a mutation of type 1 Collarjang can be associated with conditions outside of EDS and infantile cortical hyperostosis such as carpal tunnel. But, this specific mutation is not associated with carpal tunnel. The zygosity column where it says HOM means homogeneous suggesting the mutation occurs on both sets of chromosome 17. This mutation is present in the gene I got from both my mother and my father, which means that all of my type 1 Collarjang has this mutation. Genomic variant shows the actual mutation. This is not a friendshift mutation as it only adds in one extra amino acid due to it changing from one amino acid to three. If it was a friendshift mutation, it would add an extra basis that are not multiples of three. As it says CTT we can look at an amino acid codon chart for the Anticodon TCC. 
The amino acid that was added is therefore a serin. Allele frequency suggests how often this specific mutation occurs in the population if known. And finally, significance suggests whether the mutation is benign or pathogenic. At the moment, research has conflicting evidence. Here is another example of a mutation from my genetic testing. This mutation is on the ADAMTS2 gene, and under the RSID it shows that the amino acid changes from leucine to a proline, which is quite a significant point mutation from an A to AG. This mutation occurs on chromosome 5, in gene position 17877226. The RSID number is a unique label used by researchers and databases to identify a specific SNP or single nucleotide polymorphism. It stands for Reference SNP Cluster ID and is the naming convention used for most SNPs. In the description, you can see that this mutation caused a leucine amino acid to become a proline which creates a major kink in the amino acid chain, changing how it is folded. This phenotype is related to the dermatosporaxis type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome which is a very rare subtype of EDS. At the moment, research has conflicting evidence which is likely due to the rarity of the gene. As At the moment, research has conflicting evidence which is likely due to the rarity of the gene. As Dermatospraxis EDS is autosomal recessive, it means that I would need two copies of the mutation in my genes for the disorder, but that I am a carrier. If I were to have a child, they may become a carrier of the disorder or may develop the disorder if my partner also has the same mutation. Finally, here is a review of the genetic testing companies that are available to consumers. These are medical grade, meaning you can get a diagnosis. Please do not waste your money on genetic testing that is not medical grade, such as 23 and me or Ancestry. The results cannot help accurately diagnose conditions due to a large margin of error. Dante Labs is available worldwide but is situated in the UK and cost around $300 to be done. Invity is often used by medical providers but requires a referral and is a touch more expensive at $500. Nebular Genetics is much more expensive than the other two and does not require a referral. Finally, in Canada, we have access to Life Labs which I quoted as paying between $300 to $2,000 per gene. You do not get a report like the other services, and they will only look at one single gene for this price. The other genetic testing companies do your entire genome sequencing and give you more bang for your buck. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about the specific Ehlers-Danlos gene mutations, I have that coming up in another video that will be linked below.